everyone, and welcome back to Purple Noon, a podcast. I am Stephanie Conti, and I am here with the Anita to my Martin, Hi. Savannah Lanause. How are you doing? I'm doing good, doing good. I am ready to jump right into this movie. What do you think, Savannah? Let's do it. All right. Before, though... If you're listening to this on Audemic Media or you're listening to this on YouTube, fun fact, if you don't know, we now are available on Spotify Podcasts, as well as Google Podcasts and like five other different places. All the links will be down in the description wherever you're listening to. So don't forget to follow us there and check those out as well. So as for today's film, today we're going to be talking about Druk, <laughs> otherwise known as Another Round. It is a Thomas Vinterberg film and it is currently nominated, I believe, not only for Best Foreign Picture, uh, but it's also nominated for Best Cinematography at the Oscars for this year. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, whoa, whoa. I am very, very sorry. He's Thomas Vinterberg is nominated for Best Directing. Kind of big for an international film. That's awesome. Yeah, it, it's been, I mean, like last year, Parasite kind of crossed that threshold, but it's still, it, yeah. not too often does foreign films cross into the U.S. threshold of directing, acting, best picture, all things like that. Um, so another round is stars uh, it's about four friends all high school teachers test a theory that they will improve their lives by maintaining a constant level of alcohol in their blood um the main main actor that might draw you to this movie is the legendary Mads Mikkelsen uh who plays the character Martin there's also actors such as Thomas Bo Larsen Magnus Milang Lars Ranthe Ranthe I believe it's pronounced and Maria Bonnevi so, Savannah, without any spoilers or anything, what did you think about Druk, otherwise known as Another Round? I'm just going to keep referring it to Druk no, as much to. as I can because yes. I, I really enjoy that title over Another Round. <laughs> um, so I really liked the movie specifically because it's one of the first dark comedies that stays true to being a dark comedy. I feel like most dark comedies have dark subject matter, but the movie stays pretty light or funny about it. Um, and this movie is genuinely funny, but like the whole movie, you're also concerned with the direction the film is going into and you're concerned for the characters. And there is, there is pretty heavy topics we're dealing with here, but it's still funny. So just on that beat, I really, really like the film. I think you kind of spiral along with it. It has this drawn factor for sure um so without any spoilers that's what i think what do you think man this might be the first podcast review episode where we're at two totally different stances what do you think and i questioned whether maybe my bias because this is a movie done by zentropa which is lars von trier's picture maybe that kind of got into my head and i was expecting more but i I thought this film was lacking. Okay, in I can my see my opinion. It. I can see it's, it. It's a good movie, but with what they had and everything lined up, I really feel like the movie underperforms. Um, it's not a bad movie. I'm not saying it's a crap movie. Don't watch it. It's not a waste of time, blah, blah, blah. But just from the trailer and from knowing who's in it, the directing and all stuff like that, it still somehow to me falls short. So let's get into the specifics and get into the spoiler lurly parts. Um, let's first talk about directing since uh, directing, it's nominated for an Oscar in directing. Um, Savannah, did you, uh, what did you think about the directing? Uh, personally, I, I didn't notice anything Um too special I the only thing I, I really and I was going to talk about the negatives a little bit later but um with the directing for me uh, I don't know I I don't I didn't notice it's, anything crazy it, do, do you understand what I'm crazy. saying I think what I liked about the movie I like the color tone of the movie okay it kind of it feels realistic but still somehow like maybe in the past like maybe five to ten years in the past I really really like the way this film looks however and I've said this before with other movies I'm like Vinter Vinterberg put it on a tripod Put it on a dolly. I got so tired. And I understand. Yes, this is a movie that involves drinking. 
And I understand that you're going to want some sloshy feeling moments and you might want a little bit uneasiness and stuff. But when they're not drinking and when they're conversing and the camera is slightly tilting from yeah. left to right, I'm yeah, like, I see what you're saying. Tomas, Tomas, what are you doing? Come on, put that thing on a dolly or a tripod. Like, I just feel like it was all handheld and everything. Maybe it had something to do with the budget. Maybe it didn't. Maybe that right. was just director's choice. But it was still something where I'm like, honestly, and also like, if they really had heightened, here's my thinking, the stillness of the sober scenes and then put it on a shoulder rig for the drunk scenes, it really would have elevated the experience of them being drunk. Yeah, I see. It really would have added more to them being sober and their lives being flat and still and at times boring. Compared to like, you know, throw that thing on a shoulder rig, you know, get, get a little gyro. Like, I really wish that they also did scenes where, um, you know, the movie Requiem for the Dream, like when uh, they're kind of all drugged out and they're all walking through the hallways and the camera's right on their head and it looks super like disorienting. Put that rig on them. Like that would have looked so, so good, especially when you're dealing with men who are not just going to like, r- like tolerable alcohol level, but who are going above and beyond throughout the story. Yeah, no, there are definitely scenes where they could have amped it up for sure. I understand what you're saying. Um, for sure. Um, so, and I think also, oh, yeah. what were you going to say? No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, I did, one of the redeeming factors in terms of directing, the end was done well. But I don't want to get too much Agreed. in the ending, but I did like the directing of it, you know, especially with the end. But I, I'd rather, let's, let's uh, unless you want to talk anything else about directing, I'd rather save the end for when we talk about story and acting. Yeah, yeah. Let's move on. Okay. So then story-wise, Savannah, what did you think of the plot of this movie? I I did enjoy the plot. I enjoyed this Because at the end of the day, it's a ridiculous idea. And it's really just men grasping for straws and how they can, like, somewhat improve their life. Um, Like I said, the main reason I did enjoy the movie was just because of the dark comedy aspect. It's a really Mm -hmm. heavy topic. But, like, for example, one of the characters, his main motivation for drinking is that just his kids pee on him all the time. Yeah. And then there's another guy who coaches, like, children's soccer. And, and it's really like what I found it funny about it is just, those are the two guys that kept the drinking thing going. Cause at yeah. some point Mark was like, I'm, I'm done. Martin was <laughs> Moral like, of the story. Children will drive you to drinking. Literally. So like things like that, I appreciate, I appreciate quick humor. So when they would add those things in there, I'm like, okay, I, I like it. It's funny. Um, when they would start rationalizing while they're drinking, they were like, oh yeah, Hemingway drank every day look at him, you know, it would just be like this ridiculous thing. Um, so that's the main reason I came to the conclusion that I like this movie, but there are definitely some negatives I would like to get into because I do agree with you, even though I disagree to where like I did enjoy the movie, I I would watch it again. There are some very big, I think, uh, holes that the story just left. I think there was a lot of things that um, were touched upon, but they didn't really talk about um, some things that could have been more dramatized, some things they could have just amped up for the movie more. Um, But I really just like this for being a dark comedy. Yeah. And I, I really do appreciate with the type of humor in this movie is very laid back, relaxed, very realistic type humor, which I think is great. And there needs to be more. And some people might not consider this more comedy, but I I, w- I would say that it would be considered a, a dark comedy because mm-hmm. even though it's not, it's not a lot of forced comedy, it's not a lot of, there's no punchlines, there's no, um, a, a lot of it is more timing based and a lot of it is more like reasons why, like, for example, with a guy who, whose kid pisses on him and yeah. things like that. Like, I feel like it's very relaxed in it's, it's comedy scheme, which I do thoroughly enjoy. I'm not like, especially today, there's a lot of comedies that really just try to force comedy. Yeah. And I like that this just lets it happen, wh- whether or not it's intended to or not, whether it's ad-libbing or not. I ki- I do like the flow. One thing I will say that this movie does have, it has a good flow. 
it has a good flow between yeah. the from beginning to end, how we got from point A to point B. It has a good flow. And in terms of its storyline going from A to B to C to D, it just flows very well. Right. Um, however, I do feel like with and the plot line, before I get into the the not my favorite bits about the story, the plot line is solid. I think sure. having because you typically see like drunk films with people who don't have a lot going on in their life, career wise, everything, everything is going wrong in their life. Whereas these, you know, all these four, I believe it's four main actors who have a nice life going for them. You know, they're the family Very man. Cool. None of them's one, you know, worrying about losing their job. They all have steady jobs and everything like that. And overall, I kind of like how it the characters are men seemingly all at once going through their midlife crisis, whether it's, you know, someone like Mads Mikkelsen who doesn't, you know, who's having issues with his wife. Yeah. Um, or, you know, the guy where, and I'm sorry if I'm not referring to the characters' names, that's one of the things I didn't like. I could not distinguish after Mads Mikkelsen who was who. Agreed. Um, maybe like the guy who had the kids pissing on him. But the other two were very, very interchangeable for me at any point. Like I could not distinguish between them. Um, but character-wise, the way that they looked too, they were just too, a little too similar. <laughs> just <laughs> two white guys who looked very extremely identical <laughs> with this similar personalities. Very hard to distinguish. Um but I do like that demographic that they hit because they could have gone with younger guys who are like or frat bros because this easily could have been a plot for like frat bros. Where oh, it's like, yeah. Let's test the limit. And I'm happy they didn't do that because that would have been the most obnoxious movie ever made. And it would have just been a headache. I like the demographic that they hit with this movie and the plot is good. The fact that you have like because I'm imagining watching this like imagine if my history teacher had good days because he took a hit of whiskey in the bathroom before coming <laughs> out to teach me about world war ii you know i really do like that concept um now i want to know where did you think this movie in terms of its plot fell through um the movie dragged for a little bit especially mm -hmm. the beginning um you know and i didn't really understand what the some of the characters were going through like yeah. for example martin you know yeah he he was like am i boring honestly he just looked like he needed to take some vitamins i was like hey like <laughs> I, just, I was literally i'm like yo this man just needs like a hormone panel done on him. i think he's <laughs> low on testosterone that's what, like it i just didn't understand and so, same with the other characters besides the guy that like whose family was just stressing him out I didn't understand why they felt the need to do this just besides being bored. And for me, just to be completely honest, it's not a good enough reason to, to do that. So I didn't think the reasoning behind this experiment was good. Uh, like comprehensible <laughs> like yeah. you know i i wish they had added for all characters not just um you know martin mad mickelson's character i wish they added more that like they really could have played around with like so maybe something like bipolar depression you right. know some mental illnesses or maybe previous trauma they really could have done something with that because you know not to overgeneralize but that's at least here in the u.s because this is a denmark film and apparently um, in Denmark, it has the most alarming rates of drinking, where the average teenager consumes more alcohol than the average like European adult male. So it it's a startling like they obviously have kind of an alcohol issue. But I really wish they kind of would have tied things maybe to trauma because the reason why people drink you know, in some cases, and sometimes even most cases, depending on where you live, is because of either trauma of the environment you're raised in, and I, and or you know, just as a coping mechanism. And I really kind of wish they touched in on that instead of these guys like just one day going, you know, I haven't gotten drunk in a while. Let's make <laughs> this a scientific experiment. You know, I agree. I think, yeah, I, I don't know if they were just trying to keep it light. But I feel like they could have continued to do that, but give us some kind of substance. And speaking of that statistic you gave, I was actually wondering if this was a social commentary because the beginning was just like teenagers like drinking. And then 
there was like a few clips of like politicians drinking. Did you notice that? Oh yeah, well, you have Bill Clinton losing his booze and shooting over another politician, <laughs> <from> some <laughs> European. Uh, I couldn't make out who it was, but yeah, like just seeing like that. Obviously, they wanted to show. Um, how alcohol is used by people who are successful and things like that and how even successful people can use alcohol on the job which by the way i will say out of everything using that little montage was one of the most entropic things that they could have done because that montage immediately felt like i was like how said jack bill montage like it really felt eerily Oof. similar so you can tell that's where its little influences come from in terms of even though lars didn't really touch this film i was like ah you you uh Denmarkians. I don't know what the what the people of Denmark are called. Oh my goodness! But, you know, Wait. you guys have a flair for that. <laughs> what? What is there? Uh, what do you call them? That's a really good I don't point. Know. I'll There's go, a I'll word. Quick, Google, right? Obvious. Yeah, there has to be a, a word for people from Denmark aside from people from Denmark. <laughs> wow. I mean. Well, are we just like, no, we're not. We're not ignorant, are we? We just never met anybody I from mean, Denmark. I don't, I don't know anyone from Denmark. Me neither. Danes. Really? The Danes? Yeah. I thought really? that was like an older term. Maybe. Okay. I, think, I thought like Dane. Oh, oh that's Danish. Danish. <laughs> Danish. No. Jesus Christ. My brain just went Dame, Dame Judy Dench. <laughs> Dame. Sorry about that. Sorry Danish about my people. insolence. Danish but, people. There we go. <laughs> so the Danes, uh, anyways, you know what I will say about this movie that I really think was just unfair. The amount of work that they threw at Mads Mikkelsen to carry this entire movie, like not only in terms of his acting, but plot too. Okay. Like the only person who expanded and did, but also the fact that they just kind of make this character just do a lot of self reflecting <laughs> without any acknowledgement <laughs> of anything and just be like, I figured it out. I figured it out. Moderation is key. And it's like, what? How do we get there? Like, how did this happen? There's no communication about the growth. That is the biggest problem for me in this movie. It is very. One character's Madsen fan yeah, film, man. You, but you could see that they were really like, "This is about you, Mads. This is who cares about the other three? They gave one of them, and we'll talk about at the end some kind of resolution. It wasn't a good one, and the other two just kind of like went on with their life. It was I. I didn't like that aspect because. For me, if you're going to make a movie about four friends, we need to know about the four friends. You can't just take one of he, a fantastic actor and put the movie on his shoulders and then give the other actors nothing. And we're basically just wait. I felt like I was always waiting for Mads to get back on the screen. And yeah. that's a big problem. Yeah, like when it would show like the guy on the boat, I'm like, come on, how is I, I don't care. Like it's like part of me is like, I don't care how it's gonna affect you. How is it gonna affect Mads? Because he's the only one who I have any emotion for right now. Not because I like Mads Mikkelsen over all the other people in the film. It's because that's just who the they film gave him to. the character. They gave it's, him. Yeah. They gave him the character. They gave him the plot. They gave him the whole entire story on his back. So it kind of like sucks that you have these moments where you have and like maybe like the one teacher who was like telling the kid like hey man take a shot before your exam i'm here dude like well, that was interesting bad advice very bad advice it also just there's a movie that this kind of reminds me of it's called at world's end and it's a very big stretch it does not remind me a lot of at world's end but that was a movie where you had a bunch of people drinking, a bunch of men drinking, but you at least got a full scope of every character. This, it, it kind of like, instead of another round, this should have been like, instead of Fox and his friends, Mads and his friends, because <laughs> I really just couldn't, they didn't give me enough to care about these other characters. Even though they did have some good attributes here and there, it just wasn't enough compared to what they give to Mads. And it's like, I get it. He's the main character. He's the main focus. But still, you were having like 10 minute interludes of us looking at these other characters. And yeah, how we am don't I care. supposed to care for them? You know? I, but that all comes back to the main issue of we don't understand why they were even doing this to begin with. Like, you're, they were bored and oh, wow, we like, should get I drunk again. Get Mads, because he was like, 
oh, maybe the, the liquid courage will help me love my wife or whatever that was. You know, <laughs> even still, like the issue with him and his wife, it was like, because I also didn't like the timeline of that because no. they went from sleeping it up in the, the tent, <laughs> her being like crying because she's like, I've just missed you so much. And then they divorce, partly <laughs> divorce. And it make, they make it seem like it's been years when they meet up at the restaurant. I'm like, what's the timeline here? How long have these men have been drinking? That's one of the things that should have been harped on more is the fact that he had issues with his wife. I still don't understand what the problem, maybe he was just, dis, I, the, what I guessed was, okay, like maybe he was just not withdrawn. But again, it wasn't enough for me to really understand like, what is the core issue of this relationship? And the yeah. only thing that she said the whole time, it, oh, am I boring? That's what I thought was going on. Oh, maybe he got boring. She got bored. And then she's like, you're just so distant. It's like, but why? Like, you can't just tell, like, like, and like, I get it. Like, I kind of get it in terms of like that emotion to feel towards a partner. But it's like, you got to explain why you got to You can't just be like, you're distant. Meanwhile, you're schmoozing it up with them on the family vacay with the canoes. <laughs> like, you got to give more reason. Like, I need to know a little bit more. You're giving me, like, little, little, you know, nuggets. And but I want the was, fish filet. She was <laughs> cheating on him the whole time. Yeah, which was really messed up. I did not like that. No. Because I did not like that because, one, Mads didn't deserve it. Because I thought, I thought where this movie was going to go, I thought one of the men was going to ha- be infidelitous if that's the right infidelitous. word infidelitous infidelitous and maybe cheat on one of the wives that's where i thought like i would i was like kind of hoping for some drama you know i was like yeah yeah maybe there's adultery at some point and then find out the woman's like yeah i did i you know i have fun with other people and then he's just like uh and then she just it's the way it's revealed, too. She's like, I have fun with other people. She was like, oh, I wasn't supposed to wait for you. It's like, bro, what? did you even you have can, a conversation have, about this you before? Can have <laughs> girlfriends, you can go to the club. That doesn't automatically mean like, oh, my honey's in a depression and he won't talk to me. Guess I'll go sleep with another man. Yeah. Is, there's, it, it's kind of like only the top layer of the problem was identified in that marriage. And she was like, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out, you know? It was just very... it, And like I said, the story had a good flow. And what I mean by good flow, it bounced from character to character nicely. However, did I care about the characters that it bounced to? Not really. And that was one of the issues with this movie like we were going about. But I wanted to clarify the flow and the, the, the flow versus the timeline of certain things. That their relationship timeline was whack. It just didn't work well. I agree. Do you want to get into it? Okay. Oh, I do. I I wonder. So I was reading. I always love re- reading about trivia, blah, blah, blah. I really wished the story went in a different direction. And I don't know if maybe it was too tough for the director to go to. Because apparently um, Martin was supposed to have a son and a daughter as a character and the daughter because a lot of this is kind of like all the whole like beginning with the students and stuff like that is based off Vinterberg's daughter telling her stories and stuff like that when she was in high school so uh Mads Mikkelsen's character the daughter was supposed to be played by Vinterberg's real life daughter and four days before filming, she had passed away in a car accident. Oh, my God. And a part of me wonders if maybe there was going to be more involving that in the story. Because also, he had two kids, very ignored. So I wonder if maybe he was going to use his daughter to talk about maybe maybe the daughter was starting to have some bad behavior if this story went the way it originally was supposed to go through, you know, just based off my guesses. But I really, I kind of wish even after his daughter's passing, I know that's like really like messed up for me to say, but I wish he kind of stuck with the possibility of maybe having that female character in there. I don't know if it would have made a difference to the storyline, but if that's the way it was going to go as it was hinted by the trivia and everything, I think it would have been a lot better to see how, you know, Martin's kids reacted to all of this and maybe start seeing, because that's a big thing too. 
once parents start heavy drinking, the kids at some point stop start adopting that behavior. And I think, you know, during the entire experiment and everything, it would have been good to see not just the influences on the characters participating, but the influences of everyone around them, you know? Yeah, I I totally understand what you're saying. I think there just should have been more involvement from, you know, the background characters per se. So like the kids, even the wives of the other guys, like it, it just, there was nothing to add to the story. And I agree with you. Maybe like if there was um, a character, if he had a daughter, I think that would have definitely added to the story. I think there probably would have been something there. Or even just using one of the the son characters that were there and maybe having that issue because I also, I just wasn't a fan on how blasé it was that these kids were drinking and with no repercussions. That was my issue. Because if it was like, oh, you know, the kid needed a little sip before the exam, he made it, blah, 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 that was it. But every other character, every other young character that drank within this movie had no repercussions. And I just think that is entirely unreasonable in life. You know what I mean? Like, you don't, like, I, it just feels weird to show this much drinking in a majority of the time a good light. Yeah, I think they tried to do that at the end, but I agree, like, it Tell your husband I said bless you. (laughs) (laughs) That's really loud. He's downstairs, too. I'm telling him to shut up. Um, (laughs) So, yeah, now I'm distracted. Thank you. No, so I I wanted to say, like, I agree, because I I think they tried to do that with the ending, but they're not to be cruel, but... I didn't really care. And like, I'm, I'm someone who personally does it. Like you, you know me, Savannah. I'm personally someone who doesn't drink. Like there's no, like either. one drink I like and I'll have one or two. That's it. But I can go a year without drinking. I just don't care for it. I don't look it down upon people when people want to enjoy themselves and have a no. drink. However, I do feel like it's important to acknowledge the consequences of what happens, man, woman, adult, child, whatever it is. What happens when you overindulge? You know, that's that would be like if I made a movie about kids eating nothing but McDonald's and just showed it in a positive light. And I'm going to ignore like obesity levels in the U.S. <laughs> and ignore those statistics. Like, I feel like I don't know how it is in Denmark. Maybe maybe because you and me are in Florida where we have a lot of drunk driving and things like that. We're we're used to seeing on the news regularly the repercussions of, you know, alcohol essentially yeah so i don't know if maybe maybe denmark just doesn't acknowledge it as a con i don't know what's going on in denmark but i just really wish there was some type of consequence and not so much a cause and effect because the one guy who ends up was it suicide what did he just fall off the boat i'm not too unclear. sure unclear. it didn't seem like a it wasn't shown in a light where oh this is a consequence of overconsumption and becoming an alcoholic it just seems like cause and effect you drink you go on a boat you end up falling cause and effect it didn't seem like a a punishment or a consequence they could have done better um yeah i i don't know if it's a european thing i don't know if it's a danish thing but specifically with the u.s like even getting drunk is like even getting drunk one time i feel like is looked upon like kind of in a negative light so and especially me and you don't really drink and uh, that's another problem i had with the movie i couldn't relate to it drinking yeah drinking is does it has never been like fun for me um and i don't do it so that whole fun crazy aspect of it i I didn't I don't get really, and, and yeah. I think it's because me I grew, personally and like that I don't think my opinion like and even though I couldn't relate to the movie that really doesn't have a large effect no, on the movie because no. I I feel like if the it w- was more detailed and had more story and div- diverged I wouldn't have you know whether or not I was a someone who dr- drank frequently or whether it was I was someone who absolutely never had a sip of alcohol in their entire life i feel like i would still enjoy you the could movie. still yeah you could still like it um but i definitely didn't understand like the the teenagers i was just like how are you guys like drinking that much in a week yeah, that there's that one kid in the class that was just like oh yeah like i drink 
Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and sometimes Tuesday. It's like, bro, how? <laughs> like, how do you? I, yeah. I do also wish, now thinking about it, the only female, and I'm not someone to complain about diversity issues, but I do think a solid female perspective in this entire movie would have been beneficial. Not just the wife saying, you're different. You know, not just that. I feel like if they had, whether it be a female student or, you know, a, I, I, and you know what? I just feel like this movie is a big, you know, it's okay to sneak a drink to teachers type of movement. <laughs> and, you know, but like, and I, I'm thinking like types of scenarios. It felt like I had to do the thinking for all these characters where I'm thinking of all the worst scenarios. Like one part of me was like saying like, oh man, what about drinking and driving? Another part of me was like, man, like what if these teachers, and especially me being like a young woman growing up in the 21st century, wondering if, you know, maybe one of these teachers were to get too tipsy and start making moves on some of the children. Oof. Don't know if that's an issue in Denmark, but it is here in the US. And that was just something where I was like, is that going to happen? Point. Because you know what? That would be a good teaching lesson to not drink so that way you don't make moves on minors and good stuff point. like that. But those were just things that I was thinking that could have been involved. And it still just kind of felt like in the end, even after homie mysteriously <laughs> passes away, they're just like, it is what it is. And they keep and drinking. Like the dude kills himself or just dies, however it is. And they're like, I'll drink to that. And then they just keep going. And it's like, I get it. Like it's supposed to be a dark comedy and ending like that doesn't have to take itself seriously, but there isn't, wasn't even a confirmation of like, it was a, I don't care. I'm going to drink. It was just like, maybe I will, maybe I won't. Like it was just, it really, I mean, they straight up, they were straight up partying at the end. Yeah. But it still felt like, cause I, you know, part of me, because even though, like, which all, by the way, Mads Mikkelsen dance moves, stellar in the end. Stellar moves, man. Of Apparently course. he danced professionally at one point. Really? So it makes sense. I yeah, believe All it. of that was him. So in the dance scenes, and I love that scene, and I love absolutely how it was filled. But I felt like you can kind of see in his reaction that there was still something where it, it wasn't like, oh, yeah, I'm having fun, having a great time. I love booze. It was kind of like here we go again. It kind of yeah. gave more that vibe to me than just, ah, oh, whatever, we'll drink to it. Oh, I'll <laughs> jump in the, the lake or whatever that <laughs> body of water was. I, and I, I, you know. It, I just it, wish there was a confirmed, like, because at the end, two of them were getting a divorce. I don't know what the other guy was doing. Um, the teacher. And it just kind of seemed like they were going to keep doing this life so I agree with you there should have been some sort of it could have been a dark comedy but it, it is a dark comedy but it, it still could have been like lesson learned you know what it, I mean focused more not even on comedy or drama it was just a movie about aloofness and just going through hey whatever you know and it was just it really didn't concrete in either comedy or drama i feel like in the comedy aspects they could have really gone and pushed a limit when it comes to drinking and you know with you know like i really did like the grocery scene you know yeah but i felt like so they added more to that especially when they were like push it to the limit you know <laughs> but in terms of the drama aspect it was just kind of like dude got lackluster. on a boat and tripped yeah. himself you know like it very lackluster i really feel i really wish there was a type of like lesson learn. Like I, I almost wish, and I hate saying it this way. I almost wish maybe one of the guys got a little pervy with one of the students and really learned his lesson, got, you know, lost his job and then maybe offed himself on the boat. And they were like, wow, we'll drink to that, <laughs> but we won't be as bad as that guy. You know, like I just yeah. felt like it needed some type of not redemption, not retribution, but some type of consequence. I think alcohol in general is seen as this gray area. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's bad, but in society, it's not bad unless you do something bad while you're drunk or if you turn into an alcoholic. So I feel like this film does, and I don't know if that's even the approach they were taking. I don't think so. But this film does highlight this sort of issue we have of like 
alcohol being this gray area in society. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, it's kind of acceptable to a certain point, which has always been odd to me. Like, how could something be kind of acceptable? Yeah. Like, I'm someone where- I mean, like, I'll, I just- I'll have a drink. I'm not, I'm not like saying like, oh, alcohol. But I am saying like, it. it's very interesting how that is a gray area in society. I'm the type of person where if, if you need to have one, two, five drinks, if you can handle it to get a little tipsy and loosen up, that's one thing. That's totally fine. But if you're the type of person that's going to drink 10 drinks, you're going to be sloppy. You're going to need a bunch of people to take you home. You're not going to be responsible. It's like, I don't need to be a parent. Oh, like no I, I have, it, It's the same thing with like, if someone was like, you know, smoking maybe weed, like maybe a type of weed or, you know, whatever it is where, you know, there's a difference between like, for example, people who smoke weed, hang out, all that stuff like that. And there's a difference between that one guy I passed while driving home who was rolling (laughs) blood papers and who fell asleep while driving. And I had to call the cops on because he fell asleep while driving and rolling up a blunt paper. Like that's the type of thing where it's like, okay, no, like, no, 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 no. You don't do that. You don't put others at risk and you don't make others your burden. Mm-hmm. That's my kind of thing. You want to get blackout drunk? You want to get crazy? Do that in your own home. Don't say, hey, let's go to the bar. Let's have a few drinks. You're 10, you know, vodka martinis in so and true. you're half okay. nude at the bar. Like, get out. Like, I'm going to leave you there, but I'm too much of a nice person and I don't want you being taken advantage of. That is my philosophy on alcohol. I feel you like do this is your why own limits. we are close. You are my only friend that doesn't drink. And you are good <laughs> with just hanging out with me and having some iced teas, some peach tea. Dude, That's there's nothing that like it, like people are like, oh, look at my look at my bar with all my booze and alcohol. And I'm like, have you seen my coffee bar? I just bought <laughs> it. I, I literally just bought a gold. Um I think it's pronounced, sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. I literally think it's pronounced like Yigger or Jigger, G I G G A R. I'm not trying to cancel myself here. <laughs> um, but I bought a gold one for my little syrups to put in my teas. Like, that's the type of person I am. You like co- cocktails and mocktails and things like that. That's you're fine, but just take care of yourself and be responsible and don't make your life someone else's burden. Because trust me, I've been the sober person that's had to take care of someone. And I've hated people because of it. So yeah. <laughs> just a little word to the wise. Um, now I think it's safe to say that in terms of acting, we could really quickly cover acting because Mads Mikkelsen does a fantastic job. Of course. When, it, when doesn't it. he? Yeah. Everybody uh, else is forgettable. Everyone else is forgettable and falls short compared to Mads. But then again, it's not their fault. It's because Mads was literally given everything, like every single thing of the story. He was just given way too much. But, um, anyways, Savannah, what are your final thoughts on the movie? Um, this is, I I would say it's still worth a watch. It's a pretty good dark comedy. Um, it's entertaining. It's a, it's a light watch, believe it or not. Like it's not an intense film. Um, I appreciate the humor in it. Love Mads. I love some of the comedic scenes. Um, it, it just falls short. And unfortunately, I don't think you're going to remember much besides Mads Mikkelsen. And even then it's going to be one of those movies where you're like, oh yeah, I saw that. You're probably going to remember the grocery scene and then the the cool five minutes at the end when Mads Mikkelsen is busting some moves, you know? Yeah, he was jamming. So those are my thoughts, but I would say that it's still worth the watch, but um, I probably would not buy the DVD. Even though I did like this film, I, I don't think I would buy it just because I don't see myself coming back to it. Yeah, this is not something I'm going to be bringing to, like, you know, our Netflix movie night and be like, I brought Drunk over. Like, I'm not going to be that person, you know? Yeah. So what's your rating for the movie? Uh, I'm 7 out of 10. I myself feel like it, it fell a little too short for me. Yeah. I, I'm not going to recommend it, but if you watch it, I'm going to be like, hey, I watched that movie and it has two good scenes and one good actor. <laughs> like, I like I can, there's parts of it that I do like, and it's not that it's a bad movie. It no. just really falls short with what they could have done. Um, overall, would I buy the DVD? No. Yeah. Um, Am I either. rooting for the movie at the Oscars? Probably not. Um, no offense, Mr. Vinterberg. 
Sorry. No, I I actually agree with you on this one. It it doesn't deserve like best directing. I don't know about foreign film category. I haven't. I don't even know what else is nominated. Truthfully, um, but no, I don't. I don't know if this is an Oscar winner here. Yeah, I, it was nominated for the Golden Globes. It was nominated against Minari, and Minari won. So if we're talking, if you label Minari as a foreign film, Minari is way better than this movie, in my opinion. Oh, agreed. Um, I'm not going to own it on DVD, so I would have to say I have to give this a 6.3 because okay. four points for Mads and then all the other points for everything else. Um, other than that, it's just, it's a meh movie. Very unforgettable, and it could have been a lot more. Um, so yeah, so that's our review on Druk, otherwise known as Another Round. And next time, Savannah, we're actually re- going to be reviewing another movie that it, this movie is up against in Best Foreign Film, which is, oh wait, no, I'm sorry. I was shocked. It wasn't nominated. Sophia Loren's new movie, The Life Ahead, was not nominated for a foreign film. Scam. So we will talk about, I'm I haven't even seen it robbed. yet. I don't we care. will talk about if maybe <laughs> Sophia that Loren. Movie so it, it, it <laughs> should be it. nominated in my book just for her. She's gotcha. a national treasure. Of course. Um, but yeah, so we'll see how this movie in terms of foreign films, uh, uh, in terms of 2021 Oscars and everything, how it compares. So, And that's available on Netflix. So until then, we will be talking about Life of Head next week. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.